Hey, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the Peering Podcast. Um, I'm Mark Hamill. We've got Mike on the call as usual. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, doing good, Mark. Good to see you. Who, who's our special guest today? Oh, let me tell notes. you. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, everybody, welcome back uh, to the Peering Podcast in which we peer into the power of peer advisory boards and where the category is not going next to tap into Agility powered by collective intelligence. We're going to explore the why, what, who, how, where, and when of peer advisory boards by having guests of all kinds and having a fireside chat with live listeners able to join in the conversation. And I am delighted to say today that we are joined by Les Morgan. Welcome, Les. Hey, Les. Good afternoon. Hey, guys. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, good evening. everybody, yeah. depending upon where you are. And good night. And good night. That comes later, yes. Um, so listen, everybody, uh, we are blessed to have Les. Um, we're so excited that uh, he is coming on board as a forum leader for REF uh, in the UK. And he really knows his stuff because, uh, amongst many other things, he was Scotland's first director of the Leadership Trust. And for two decades and more already, he's been uh, building his own business focused on leadership values and trust, including being chairman uh, for 10 years of the first charity in Scotland to create, operationalize, and measure values and leadership and trust. He does deep dives, and I'm sure we're going to get into this today, not just into the IQ of competence, but even more so the EQ of character, and uh, he's, for which he's developed his own framework. No doubt we'll hear more about that as we go along. And one of the things that, Les, when you and I first started talking, uh, you talked about the contrast between escaping and inscaping, which no doubt we're going to have a great conversation about. Uh, welcome, Les. How are you today? I'm all good. There's snow in the ground and the ski slopes are opening, so I'm perfectly happy. Because Les is up in Scotland, everybody. And, in the Highlands. Uh, in the Highlands of Scotland. And uh, I, my wife is Scottish. Uh, we got married uh, 30 years ago in Moffat in Dumfrieshire in, in Scotland. Right, right. And uh, so uh, I have a great affinity with Scotland. Uh, Mark, have you spent much time up there? Yeah, my kids go to school up beside where Les lives. So um, we have a house there. We're there every couple of weeks just to check in on the on the kids. And absolutely one of the most beautiful parts of the world. Yeah. Uh, absolutely love it. So Les, let's, uh, let's start here by perhaps would you tell us more about kind of the combination of things that you, that you focus on and that you do and, and that uh, align with your passion and kind of what was the journey by which you kind of got here? Yeah, for me, there's there's three crucial aspects to any successful organization, whether it's public, private, or voluntary, which is leadership, trust, and values. Mm. You put those pillars in and things will be far smoother. And for me, that fell out of, in some ways, my slightly troubled childhood and getting in trouble with the law at times and the teeth. <laughs> And a teacher seeing something in me that I didn't see in myself. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me, Les, that you were a troublemaker? I just, I just can't believe that. <laughs> I also still have, I still have a letter from the police about shopping some guys that were breaking into cars. So you know, I have a positive letter from the police as well as various, oh, okay. various interviews at other times um, when the I kind of went off the rails. Yeah. Um, Troubled childhood. Yeah. But... Mr. McAlpine, who was the head of geography, and this is where I start differentiating, a bit like leadership and management, education and schooling. Schooling comes from the Greek scholae, which means to put into education oh, okay. from the Latin educare, which is to lead out of. Nice. What we have in the Western world is we have schooling. We do not have education. Um, and I had a head teacher in geography that was more into education and schooling I used to be late in, and because I'd probably broken into the school a few times before this, I knew I knew which windows that I could climb in to avoid my name getting taken for late coming. And, Just be careful, uh, Liz. There are no there are no crimes you're still wanted for, are there? <laughs> a, a, apart from painting Perth from the, the town centre to the school as to Kerr's Cafe, because he was the rector, 
<laughs> and uh, the messages were posted on certain people's walls, which weren't appreciated. Hey, by um, the way, we've got uh, got Lara here with us. Welcome, Lara. Thanks for being here today. Keep going, um, Les. So, he oh, saw... sorry, wasn't really sure what this call was about, but <laughs> it's about you, it's Lara. It's, it's about you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Les. Um, Not a chance. So, <laughs> so for me, it was he suddenly in my latter years in school made me a prefect, which meant that somehow he thought I was responsible enough to get to school early to take the names of the latecomers <laughs> when, I, when I'd been a latecomer for the previous few years. Um, and suddenly that responsibility, along with then rugby captain, basketball captain, athletics captain, it just showed me a different side of things that mm. um, became interesting in terms of teamwork and as I rose through the ranks, so because I was a trained PE teacher, but I never taught, I went into leisure management. Um, because at that point, there were eight regions in Scotland, and a region can put you to any school that they wanted. And there are various schools in Scotland, especially, that I didn't want to go to. So I took the my sort of career in my own hands and applied for leisure industry jobs. So that's back in the, the mid-70s. Um, because these things of called sports centers were appearing all over the place. Right. And what I learned through that and then becoming involved in national sports in Scotland with playing for Scotland, basketball-wise, is the whole team aspect and the sharing of intelligence, knowledge, teamwork, strength, character, all of yeah. that. So when when we created the when I was finally head of a department of leisure, the team I put together, we did in those days the Belden, you know, team skills, right. different aspects, so that people became far more self-aware, and there was less of a hierarchy, and roles were given out according to people's strengths. So even although I was maybe director, certain people would do things that a director would normally do because they were quite frankly better at it. So not that right. I understood it at the time, but that was more the emotional intelligence because in, especially in local government, it's a hierarchical, Newtonian, hierarchical, black and white, command and control. And what, I, what we created in the department was exactly the opposite. And what was interesting is we won Leisure Centre of the Year Award, we won Ski Slope of the Year Award, we won Leisure Department of the Year Award, so in a very small authority in an old mining community in County Durham, they actually got a lot of national coverage because wow. we turned leisure into health. I used to have something that said sport was 60, recreation was 70, leisure was 80, and pleasure, spelled P-L-E-I-S-U-R-E, -E, would be 90s. And right. the whole of that turning leisure into... We, in the UK, we don't actually have a national health service, even though they're all in strike today. Um, <laughs> We don't have a national health service. We have a national sickness yes. service. Yes, and the UK is goes when you're sick. The UK has regressed back into the 70s and 80s this week, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. What a what a really cool story. So hang on a minute. Let's let's back up the truck here. Did you say that you played basketball for the for the Scotland team? Did you say that? Yeah. Yep. Does that mean you're very tall, Les? I've never seen you stand Les up. Les is very tall. <laughs> Les is very tall. Well, I was the, the small guy that played pivot. So I'm I'm six foot three. My coach has always said, Les, you play six foot six. But you know but what I really... Was, I was playing against the likes of Fred Petty at the time, who's seven oh, foot wow. two and played for England. Wow. But you know what I really love about that? And you and I haven't really spoken about this so much so far. But in all of my work around agility and trying to help people understand what agility is and what it isn't and how to apply it in business. Of course, I talk about sport a lot. And I talk about games in particular that have one team on the, on the, on the court or on the field at any one time, as opposed to two specialist teams, offense, defense, like in mm. American football, obviously American football is still a good analogy, but, but soccer, basketball, ice hockey, you know, a, a game that really ebbs and flows from defense to offense is a fantastic analogy of agility. And I think, therefore, your work around the difference between IQ and EQ and trust and leadership and values, what a great real world experience to be able to draw on, Les. That's phenomenal. 
And I think the key thing with basketball is that everybody basically, more so than soccer or football, everybody in basketball is a scorer. So right. everybody can score. So unlike netball, which for me is yeah. a game of don'ts, you know, don't cross the line, don't bounce the ball, yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, basketball, it really is a team and anybody can score. Yeah. And especially if I'm the big guy getting the ball out of the hoop, if somebody's just scored, if I have a set up with a, with a guard, he's already halfway up the court right. for the right, swift, right. swift pass for the score before they've even got into defense. Yeah. Mark, did you ever play basketball? Are you tall? I don't I've never seen you stand up, Mark. Are you tall enough to play basketball? <laughs> I'm I'm taller than Les, slightly. Oh. Um so I'm six four. Myself oh. and Les have met up a couple of times. I think we were always been the tallest in the room. Oh. Um no, rugby was my sport. So again, oh, okay. another team sport. Um absolutely, you know, have rugby oh. boots, will travel, oh. travel All the right. world, play games. Um, well, I'm also six foot it. four, so <laughs> we can set up. Our anyway, own let's get back. Team. Let's get let's get back on track here. Let's get back on track. So keep going. You're not six so, foot above six foot. You're out of this organization. So, so Les, yeah. let's let's get, <laughs> let's get back on track, Les. So c- continue telling us, Les. How did you then? It's it's becoming clear, but finish off. How did you yeah. arrive at your focus that you have today? And what is that focus? Tell us more about that. Yeah. So when I, when we were creating that leisure department. I applied to go on. There was a, a, a local government training board at that time. It was run by the government for prospective directors and chief execs in local government. Um, and I went on the sort of directors one, and, and the organization, that, which was a UK wide organization, asked me to come on the chief execs one. And what blew my mind at the time was I was the guy that ended up on doing all the errands on the bike and and abseiling off a bridge at 60 feet um, to make things happen and get us to the goal. And and I had always seen chief execs as people that were certainly better than me in in many respects, because from a very working class background in the housing estate with the gangs back in the 60s in Perth. um, And suddenly I thought, hang on a minute, it, it's actually about how you conduct yourself mm. and how you connect and actually it's forming the relationships actually before the results. It's the relationships that get the results, right. not the results right. that get the relationships. Right. Um, right. And so that opened my mind and then I became the second youngest UK chief executive, local government chief executive. And chief execs are normally from financial or legal backgrounds because they're there to protect the council. For me, from my back I'm there to protect the public that's what a public servant does um so there were very few chief execs that weren't dare I say IQ orientated and that enabled me to do various things in a different way and link up here where Baxters and Walkers you'll see Walker shortbread and everywhere and people most people know Baxters foods but getting those type of companies together along with the public sector along with the charitable sector to create a community because normally they're all in their own silos. Right. And the chief executive, who I cannot get any more money by making anything happening because I'm on a flat rate. And I believe there's a huge power and influence in being the person that can bring people to the table without any concept that <laughs> I'm getting something out of it. Right, right. And I think that trust, those values, yeah. public service, community, uh, and although I got fed up with the politics, because needless to say, a lot of it is self-service and public service rather than public than, than sorry private service rather than public service. Uh, I gave that up after four years. And in the Highlands of Scotland, the five Fs: forestry, farming, fishing, fabrication, which is the oil industry, and fermentation, which is the whiskey. Employment-wise, we're all doing that. Right. Because everything's being, you know, run a distillery with two people pressing buttons. Um, so for me, I then set up the Highlands first call center because you can do it anywhere in the world, as we know. Um, and the Highlands at that time, I'm talking the mid 90s, had the new ISDN networks just put in. And the contracts we got through Cap Gemini were actually all the parking fines for London. So we're answering the phones in the Highlands, you know, good morning, good afternoon, parking fines department, London Borough of Ealing. Um, and then people would say, well, you know that place in the high street next to Woolworths? <laughs> did um, you end up did you end up calling Mark's cell phone a lot? 
<laughs> His was an automatic straight through. Um, <laughs> Do not so answer many. calls from Les. <laughs> so that, oh. that also showed me we set that up on a set of values because nobody wants to pay a parking fine. So that was actually quite pressurizing wow. work for That's the people nice. on the phones. Yeah. Um, so we set up based on that values and I learned more. And BBC Two Money program, as it was at that time, came up to film because of this new concept, back office wow. working. Um, and then I joined the Leadership Trust um, because they were expanding. And what was interesting about the trust was back in the sort of 60s, 70s, 80s, there were management programs on, but this was a leadership program set up for leadership, probably one of the first in Europe, leadership focused. And it was set up by an ex SAS guy and his wife, who was a psychologist. And it was a five day program. Companies came from all over the world. Uh, and it was just stunning. It was the whole wow. experiential aspect. Wow. Um, stunning stuff. And, and to be honest, most of the conversations at midnight and onwards were about how these men in an IQ world had got to the top, had thought they were helping their families because they were getting better money, better homes, better cars, better holidays but they'd actually lost the connection with wow. their children. Wow, mm. goodness me. How profound is all of this? And boy, you've touched upon another of my favorite things in my agility work is, is special forces, right? Mm. How cool is it? How cool is it to sit around a, a campfire kind of thing like you're describing and hear stories and examples and insights and, and mantras and phrases from people that have, again, done it in the real world like special forces sas etc so oh my gosh mark any I mean, any I'm... any particular thoughts or questions or comments from you so far no i mean it's just look i know i've got to know les a lot over the last like three years and the whole focus that he brings he just touched on it there at the end the whole focus on eq vulnerability connectivity yeah we've worked with les in ypo in vab and, you know, singularly, he's best in class globally in that area and is so pioneering. Um, I was just kind of curious on Les's first steps into the whole peer to peer world. Um, maybe if you could share a little bit on that. Yeah, great question. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened is what was interesting for me is when I set out my own about 20 years ago after the Leadership Trust, what was interesting then for me is that. We, we always did a pre-course interview to sort of prepare people for what they were going to experience. The post-interview was less focused on, and for me, that was where I spent my time because many people left jobs, left relationships, left families as they found themselves. So we're back to the whole thing of who is the authentic you, which, which all Gabber Matty's work now really is focused on in terms of 95% of all ill health is predominantly due to where, you know, the old nature nurture thing, it's now 95% nurture and about 5% nature because everything in us is activated by our location and our environment. And, and I suppose for me, I spent more time debriefing people out the leadership trust than selling more courses. So I was getting more pressure again in the IQ way. Finally, they've been on the course, they've paid the money. We need more people now. And I'm going, Sorry, but my values are we have to help this person re-enter the world from a different perspective. And, and after that, when I went out on my own, the peer group side of things emerged because three out of the first four companies I worked with were run by YPOs. Um, and I kind of was very interested in why that was the case because I was going and say, well, they would say, yeah. what are you going to do? And I would go, I don't know, because I need to speak to your people. Well, how long is it going to take? I don't know. So <laughs> what are you going to do? I, I don't know. No. Um, <laughs> and so they trusted me as a person because I really didn't have a process. I, yep. You know, I, right. I, I never ever fill in, uh, what do you call it, when you oh, when you put something out and you have to apply through that process. Appli right, Contra application form, yeah. Like contract. a contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tender. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've never done one in my life because it just doesn't fit. Right, right. It's about the relationship and then it's about the peer group because uh, what I then found is I put all of those chief executives from the companies we're working with together, a bit like YPO, 
but not that I knew anything about it at the time, in, in a peer group where they would learn from each other and share and develop yeah. and deepen yeah. and yeah. have a support group for when there was an emergency. Yeah, wow. So for, for me, the peer group appeared out of that. And that's not dissimilar if you look at even the World Cup at the moment. Croatia got through, no real stunning players as such, but in terms of Morocco got through as well, based on a team and, and, a, and a team concept of working for each other and learning from each other and covering for each other. Which and I do, believe, I do believe that Les just opened the door to talk about the World Cup, Mark. Unless that he wasn't going to talk about it, yeah. <laughs> no, we won't yeah. go there. We won't yeah. go there. It's like France, No, Argentina no, but a quick, a quick one on that. <laughs> literally, I was just listening to a, a different podcast on Croatia's success. And as the the whole ethos is built on, a a lot of these players know each other from they come up through two main teams. Um, it's a huge team sport environment: water polo, basketball. Um, it's, it's all like team sport, like ethos based. So the they're not just like thrown together. These people know each other for years. And they're all kind of growing up in that team sport environment. So it's just super interesting. That and it is, kind of exactly. And it is, it is that, that idea that, you know, on paper, to some degree, teams look similar, don't they, right? Like it's Argentina, France in the final. Of course, they have different players, different personalities. But on paper, by and large, right, you could make a case that on paper they're kind of equal. So it's, it's this, yeah, but what makes the difference on the day, on the field, in the moment, as in to why heat. one in the heat, under pressure, especially if things are, aren't going your way, and you're down at half time, let's say, what is it that allows one team to outperform the other? And I suspect, Les, that that is at the heart of the questions that you've been wrestling with all these years. Can you tell us more about that? For me. It's around, if you put on a mask, nobody knows who you are. So this back to Covey's habit five, seek first to understand and then be understood. If, as, as Gavin Matty would say, if you put on a mask and you're asking people to help you, in what way can they help you? They can't help you in the way that you need help because they don't know who you are. So in, in, in the heat of battle, especially in the sports field, you will, through training, let alone anything else, start to learn about people's nuances, their peculiarities, the way they need supported. And you'll hear a lot about, you know, you go back to, dare I say, Sir Alex Ferguson and the way that he would deal with players and get them in the way that he needed to get them. And Aberdeen, going back before he was in Man U up here in Aberdeen, the way he would put a team together and bond them. It's, that, it's the relationship again. It's at the, the what forums as such and peer groups until somebody starts to deepen it or a facilitator takes you deeper, they yeah. will never get out what they ultimately yeah. need and want. Yeah, which is, a, which is, go ahead, sorry. And, and, and all of that in the work that I do with for, for YPO, inevitably the retreat will be about going deeper. They want to go right. deeper. Right. Um, and, and um, obviously, that is a great segue in a moment into, you know, uh, peer forums and what, what you're going to be doing with us in the UK. And But but for our American listeners, of course, Sir Alex Ferguson uh, used to be the coach, the manager of Manchester United many years ago. He left, what, like 10 years ago almost, I think? Uh, yeah. Probably more, but 12. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but the Americans will know Beckham because he's over there now with the, the, yeah. the, the, the soccer yeah. team. Exactly. And um, Miami. of course... Uh, 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 Man United used to win everything, and now they don't, and they haven't done for a long, 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 long time. And whether you Since watch left. W- when you watch the English Premier League or not, you've heard about that story and Cristiano Ronaldo and all of that kind of stuff. Just for our American listeners. So anyway, um, uh, this is obviously more of a UK oriented uh, episode, everybody, because but, we are but very the Americans. The Americans own Man United. The same. That's as right. They do. Play. That's correct. You do, everybody. Congratulations. You own <laughs> Manchester United. Or commiserations, perhaps, for the last ten years. No doubt, uh, you will bounce back. Um, 
So uh, this is more of a UK oriented um, uh, episode, everybody, because we're very busy right now um, entering uh, the UK with forums and, and Les is forming a forum that we'll talk about more in a moment. But Les, before we go there, could you tell us just a little bit more about this concept of inscaping rather than escaping? Yeah, for, for me, in general, if you're in pain or you've been uh, trauma as a kid or whatever it is, most people will escape to drink, drugs, sex, porn, work, exercise, whatever it is. And, and we get that high that just covers over our pain. But the pain never, never really goes. And inscaping is really about the journey inwards. Um, escaping is the journey out. Inscaping is, mm. as Hammer said, said, you know, the internal journey is the longest word. Mm. Because that's a journey to self-awareness. Now, that's about the person as much as it is about the forum, because it's just the same thing. You know, yep. if, if the most advanced thing on the planet is the human body, we have 72 organs in the human body, and not one organ controls any other organ. Each organ does what it needs to do when it needs to do it. In an ideal world, that's exactly how organizations should be, and W.L. Gore that are global they're a matrix, no titles, no job descriptions, but on average earn 12.2% more year-on-year -year profit than similar organizations that are focused in the FTSE 100. So if you put money before meaning, you'll get less money. Wow. If you put meaning yeah. before money, you'll get more money. Yeah. Wow. And so, so for me, the inscaping is about the self. Who am I as a person? Am I prepared to be vulnerable? Because for me, the first role of a leader is to be confidently vulnerable. Beautiful. Because if, if, if the only constant in life is change, what enables people to change is their self-awareness starts to shift. Now, that is not based on, needless to say, the brittle IQ stuff. IQ created in 1902 in Paris, France by Alfred Binet because the French government were about to create the first ever state schools in France and they were going to be really expensive. So Beanie was asked to create a test to make sure the idiots did not get in. Wait, wait, wait. Does this mean we can blame the French? We can. For IQ, oh! <laughs> for, for IQ, we certainly can. Because that's why it became the Stanford Beanie test later on, oh. because the Americans in Stanford wow. created the Stanford Beanie test. But, but no, not, really, was, not really French people. We love you, French people. But IQ was a negative test, and wow. it still is. Awesome. Wow, Mark, uh, this is why we are so grateful that you introduced us, introduced, introduced us to Les. Every time I interact with Les and have a conversation, uh, I, it just takes me deeper and deeper and deeper. And I know, as you've said, Les, the inner journey, I mean, there's the outer journey, the outer universe of systems and structures and strategies and all that stuff. But there's this inner journey of beliefs and hopes and dreams and, and it's the human journey intelligences yep. and it's the human part it's the heroic part right it's the it's the it's the actualization the self-identity and it's oftentimes that's, yeah that's where the top, the top end is the self-actualization to be all you can be that's that's where the root of everything is everybody mark what a what a fantastic introduction you have blessed us with with les I'm just happy to get him off my hands, to be honest. I was about to say, yeah. he's just happy to move me on. Stop <laughs> pissed on me. So, Les, um, so we're delighted that you are engaging with us in the UK, uh, amongst others, uh, to help build out our footprint of forums. Uh, you are doing a virtual key group that uh, will be nationwide uh, of key executives, leaders, managers uh, i'm sure leaders more than managers as you've begun to articulate yeah. uh and it'll be um virtual and to some degree blended perhaps with um you know rendezvous and get togethers occasionally tell us a bit more les what is it about uh peer forums as as the sort of work you love to do what is it about becoming a forum leader with ref uh that has sort of got you uh you know floated your boat got you engaged and uh, sort of lighted your passion to, to work with us? Because ultimately for me, the, the peer group, the forum type work is the most enjoyable work I do because it goes deeper. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not brilliant at what I would put, you know, in, in a hierarchy of communication where bottom is ritual and cliche and then it's gossip and fat, then it's ideas and judgments, which is the first time you see the person, which for most conversations drop below that. Uh, and then up second level, second top level is emotions and feelings. And, and yes, you can you can talk about change at ideas and judgments, but things will not change until you get to emotions and feelings. Um, because that's where the change takes place. That unless you're prepared to change in some way, how can you ask others to change? And we all know what it's like to work for a manager rather than a leader. Um, and so for me, peer groups over the last real 10, 10 less than 10 years now with, with um, other organizations looking at peer groups, that's where the real business is done and where the conversations, I can remember one um, mixed a peer group in a European country where the topic of conversation, not that it started with that, but ended up in premature ejaculation. <laughs> now, when are you going to have such a real conversation about something <laughs> that others are prepared to share openly and with yep. authenticity? I just go, this is the business for me. This, mm. If people can talk about their most vulnerable aspects and learn what it's like from others that are in the room that's a mixed room, that for me is just the real McCoy. Yeah. Um, and I, just, I, had a, I just had a call this morning <laughs> with a prospect and um, just talking through the whole, you know, forum experience. And um, it just, it, it was exciting kind of reliving a little bit, you know, my... You know, when I joined a forum for the first time, I had no idea what to expect. Absolutely no idea. And just as you said, having seen a few different forums over the years, the the moderation, the moderator we had, the facilitator for the first one was just incredible. And it he just enabled this new like group <laughs> to achieve like a depth, uh, a trust and a but level of vulnerability in in an incredible speed, um, and we were only meeting once a quarter. Yeah, so mm, there was right. a good, a more staggered rhythm. We were having um, yeah. virtual and in person, and um, it was just incredible. So just reliving that converse part of those experiences today, and just came back to uh, yeah. that that uh, moderator facilitator just yeah. was so important to just bring that trust and that cohesiveness together so you can get vulnerable um with total confidence yeah what i what i love about what i love about the, the last couple of minutes uh, listeners is kind of the shock factor of of where the conversation just went as a fantastic example of really what les is saying is when you have created the conditions in a peer forum of trust caring transparency, safety, there is truly nothing off limits that you can't talk about in a peer forum. Now, obviously, we talk a lot about a lot of business stuff, a lot of basic stuff, a lot of, a lot of leadership and culture and teamwork and strategy and structure and all of that kind of stuff. We do talk about in a peer group, we do talk about the external journey, of course, and we talk about that inner journey uh, at great length. And people will progressively self-disclose the most personal things like you've never heard before. And, and as Les and Mark know, I, I facilitated four peer group forums for 15 years with 40, 50, 60 members at any one time, 200, 300 over those years, every month. And it's almost like Les by and large, there ain't any issues left that I haven't heard, processed, disclosed, um, explored in a peer forum of equally shocking, uh, with equal shock factor as to the example that Les just used. And so everybody, this is the power of being able, when you come to a peer forum, to hang it all at the door. Hang the armor, the thick skin, the ego at the door. Come on in, be fully you. 
And, 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 and that fool of you is the key because I talk about in terms of the four quotients, physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual, yeah, yeah. to live, to learn, to love, to leave a legacy, human living, human doing, human being, and being human. In a peer group, you can be human. You can, it's the most, it should be, if it works correctly, it's the most safe place for you to show yourself 100%. Unlike probably everybody, listeners, probably unlike anything you have remotely experienced before. We often get asked, right, is a peer forum, is that like a networking thing? Is it, like a, is it like a training thing? Is it like a coaching thing? Is it like a consulting thing? What is it? No. I mean, there are elements of those things to it, but no, it is a much, much, much deeper thing than yep. that, that does, that does deal with basic business things. Should I buy? Should I sell? sell? Should, I, should I stay? Should I go? Should I, should I you know, double down or unplug? All of those basic things. But as, as Les is articulating, and I know, Mark, you'll comment more, you can't just talk about parts of the problem. You have to talk about the whole problem, the whole challenge, the whole solution. Yeah. And often, often many of the solutions are, are on the inside and, and to do with us and our beliefs and our perspectives and our assumptions and our identities and our fears and hopes and dreams and all that. Go ahead, Mark. I was going to say, look, we, we obviously people find it easier in the beginning to talk about business, you know, in your updates. But the depth and the growth as a forum comes from, you know, the personal and the family, primarily the personal, just that exposure and being comfortable. Yeah. I would have said in 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 my forum experience, we probably had in presentations, probably only like a quarter end up being business related. And they're right. the ones that are the easiest to get through. Yeah, yeah. because you, you can share experience. You can talk about, you know, like that example, we're buying a business or we're selling or we're exiting. Uh, we're going into new markets. They're quite like tactical things. Um, whereas the personal stuff and the family stuff is just there's layers and layers of complexity yeah. to explore. Um, and, yeah. you know, the, the you know, coming out of, you know, almost like going into the the monthly kind of forum is it's something you look forward to, you know, yeah. because it is that like, oh, I can't wait for my next forum. I, I've got so much I need to like, yeah. you know share uh and i want to you know it's even being in some forums where i felt like on particular topics i have no shared experience I, I, that's never ha i have no shared experience but there are generally areas that you can actually find that you know it, it's relevant to to yeah. share it could be and slightly different but it's different viewpoint yeah yeah i'd like almost I, i'd almost put it as it's a nourishing place to be it's yeah, a bit like are. plants yeah, plants need a climate and a that's soil it. Yeah. to grow best yeah. and you look for that this peer groups with, with the right set of values are the place to nourish human beings yeah, yeah but i do i do i mean again i just reiterating that i think so much of it and look you both have much more experience than, than me in 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 moderation facilitation that the the standard is set by the moderator exactly. by the facilitator like exactly. that's I've been blessed is, to have some amazing ones, neither of them, yeah. either of you, for sure. But uh, that, I think you guys take it to a whole new level. But it is that, that's part, that's such a huge part of the voyage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'd have been a, you'd have been a lot of work, Mark. We'd have, we'd have, we'd <laughs> I have still have am, make, Mike. What do you mean I have, would have been? I still am. We'd have had to make a special <laughs> project of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd no, but, but made him, I'd have just had him standing in the corner with a pointed hat on, facing uh, the corner, facing uh, the corner. So, really, but but uh, in all seriousness, everybody, what Mark just said is 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 absolutely true, and it's a perfect segue. Um, that obviously not everybody is cut out to be a high performing facilitator, moderator, leader of a high performing uh, forum peer group that is able to fully explore the outer universe and the inner universe and all of the alignment that occurs in between. So we, we truly feel as no doubt you've heard listeners blessed to have uh, Les coming on board our team. As, as we heard, he's going to be forming a virtual nationwide group for key executives, senior leaders, 
unless uh, beyond you know the basics of of the kinds of you know uh, roles that those people will have that we're looking for a little bit deeper what what kind of members are you looking for what um what kind of members will fit in beautifully and uh, play along and uh, give and get huge value from the kind of group that you want to form basically i suppose those that are open and curious yeah um and willing to learn yeah the key thing with all change is leadership are do you care about you know yourself and and are you developing are you growing do you want to achieve things do you want to learn more stuff so yeah i often say if I'm doing a, uh, a workshop with some description, do you come with an open mind prepared to to change? Yeah, beautiful. Um, and, and it's as simple as that. It's not about yeah. degrees or qualifications or schooling or whatever. Yeah. It's just a human being that is wants to improve themselves and help and improve those around them to serve themselves and their community. Beautiful. Well, that's a great place to start landing the plane. Uh, everybody, uh, uh, that was another episode of the Peering Podcast. Uh, find us at thepeeringpodcast.com. Uh, as you heard, uh, we've got to know Les a lot more during this call, and we can't wait to go onwards and upwards uh, with the forum that Les will be building in the and UK. I've, I've, I've got a wee poem to finish with. Oh, tomorrow. perfect. There we are. Let's go. Let's take it away. <laughs> Needless to say, it's from the ancients, you know, the, the, the American Indians <laughs> before we IQ'd America. Okay, perfect. The creator gathered all of creation and said, I want to hide something from the humans until they are ready for it. It's the realization that they create their own reality. And the eagle said, give it to me, I'll take it to the moon. And the creator said, no, no, they'll go there and they'll find it. And the salmon said, I'll take it to the bottom of the ocean. And the creator said, no, they'll go there too. And a buffalo said, I will bury it on the great plains. And the creator said, no, they will cut into the skin of the earth and find it even there. And the grandmother mole, who lives in the breast of Mother Earth and has no, who has no physical eyes but sees with spiritual eyes, said, put it inside them. And the creator said, it is done. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the realization that they create their own reality. And it's that's hidden. what peer groups it's are hidden, about. Is hidden Fantastic. in plain, is hidden in plain sight. Plain sight. Right exactly. inside of us. Les, thank you so much. Mark, how are you gonna how are you gonna follow that? Well, I'm gonna come and stand in the corner at Liz's <laughs> Les's session. So that's uh, I've got my spot already. And, awesome. And we've, we've got the roadblocks up so the, awesome. the Sassanax can of get back up to go. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, Mark, it's great to see you. Les, great Fantastic, to see you. Fantastic, Les. Thanks, Mike. Beautiful. Thanks so Thanks, much. Guys. See you next Thanks, time, Thanks, guys. Everybody. Thanks. That's it. Take care. Thank you. All right. All Bye -bye. the best. Bye.